to another video on the Praxis um, 2 geometry um, type questions for the 0061 test. And here we have a, <clears throat> it's a fun question because there's a couple of interesting ways to solve it. And let's go, let's go over what we have. So first of all, we have a circle with center O and a radius of 2. So this this is our center O, and here's our radii OP and CO. They're both equal to a length of 2. So I'll label that 2 and 2. And AP has a length of 3. So from A to P over here, the length is 3. Label that. And is tangent to the circle at P. So this tangent line meets the circle at P, and since it hits the diameter right there, right, CP, it says it, it's a diameter of the circle, this is a right angle, and triangle APC is a right triangle, and it's a, a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right, APC is equal to a 3, 4, 5 triangle, that's a, a Pythagorean triplet, right, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, and so AC right here, it's going to be equal to 5 whatever, whatever units we're looking at. So they want to know what's the length of BC, right? This length right here. Let me highlight that in red. So we know right away the answer is not 5 because this whole length is 5. So how can BC be 5? So how can we figure that out? Well, one, one way that I would figure it out is to say that, okay, this tangent line right here, and this line is a secant, right? A secant just means it hits the circle at, at, at two points. So it's a secant line and it crosses the circle at two points right there. One thing we know about secant lines, and I can go over this in detail in other videos, is it's just that if we have a line, one secant line right here and another right there, and we, we label it some points, right, here and here, and here is, I don't know, A, B, C, D, this is C, and E. A, B times A, D is going to be equal to A, C, right? So A, B times A, D is equal to A, C times A, E. It's a fun thing we can prove in another video. Um, but but what that also means is that let's say we had if we messed around with these lines a little bit and and moved them around if if we had this line as secant and one of them is as a tangent right we can we can think of this right here we we move the point so basically we took point E let me highlight that point E and point C and we move them down to one point over here right we move them this way to make this a tangent line so we still have A B and D. And over here we have C and E combined, we'll just call it C. So now AC times AC equals AB times AD. And all I did there was I thought of, well, this line segment times this one have been combined into one, so it's AC twice, or AC squared equals AB times AD. And if we had two two tangents, let's say right over here, and this could be helpful in other questions if they ask it, like this, and we label our points A, B, and C, well then A, B squared equals A, C squared, and that's actually very helpful to us in this problem because we have this, A, P, that's, that's like AC over here, um, right? It's a tangent line. So AP squared equals what? Well, we have the secant line, so it equals AB times AC. We know what AC is. That's, that's 5. And AP is 3, so 3 squared is 9. So what does AB equal? Well, well, AB equals 9 divided by 5, which is, which is what? Well, 5 goes into 9 once, and there's 4 fifths or 0.8 left over. So what does that mean? Well, if the whole thing is 5, and AB right here is 
BC has got to be equal to th what's left over, or 3.2. And that's one way to solve this. Another way is to use um, some other interesting properties of tangents and, um, and intercepted angle, inscribed angles. So let me, let me show you this other way of solving it. Okay, so clear this off and clear this off. All right, so this, the second way of solving it, I think, is a little bit more difficult. Uh, it just feels less natural to me, but we can we can still solve it this way. If I connect these lines right here, I've got tri this triangle, right? P, B, C, and this is actually a right triangle. The reason why is because this angle right here, it's an inscribed angle, right? It's inscribed in the triangle, and the the inscribed angle is is equal to half of the intercepted arc. Where's the arc? Well the arc is it's right here. Right? Now now the reason we know that this arc is 180 degrees is because CP is a diameter and that makes sense, right? If we have a circle we have a diameter cutting across anywhere in the circle cuts the circle in half, which means that each arc has to be half the degrees of the circle. So in this, we're given that we have a diameter. So this, this arc is 180, and the inscribed angle over here has to be half of that. So this is a right triangle with a right angle right here. So now we have two similar triangles. And CP, right, that's the hypotenuse, to AC, this, this other hypotenuse, it's going to equal um, BC, that's, that's what we want to know, right? This side right here, what's, what is that going to equal? Well, that's going to equal CP, which is kind of interesting, right? We're going to use that twice. I think I said it right. Let me, let me just double check. So, so CP is the hypotenuse of the small triangle, which corresponds right to the AC, the, the hypotenuse of the larger triangle. And that's going to equal BC, BC right here, the base of the, the triangle, to CP right here, the base of this triangle. And I guess, you know, if, if we're looking at why these two triangles are similar, I should say that they both have right angles, and they both share a common angle right here. So we have enough for the two triangles to be similar. We have two, two equal corresponding angles. So how do we what do we do next? Well, we can do a lot of different things, but but I'll solve it as CP is 4 over 5, which is AC equals BC over CP, which is 4. Multiply both sides by 4 and we get 16 over 5 is BC, which equals 3.2. So two different ways to solve the same problem. All right, hope that helped.